I want to quickly go over the Unity Pro Thermal Camera. This is the UT260B model, 256 by 192 resolution at 25 hertz frame rate for $395. Wow. Similar specifications on the floor cam would cost you somewhere around three, four thousand dollars. So let's take a look at the camera. And I can tell you, this camera feels high quality. It's rugged and I love the handle. I love the way this feels. I actually like the feeling of this one better than my Fleur E60. This is a $6,000 camera and this one is a $395 camera. But the feel and handling on this one, I like it more than this one. This one is bulky and it's bigger. All right, let's take a look. The buttons are solid. I love the feel of the buttons, just like the floor cam. The screen is big. And I just love the overall feel on this camera. Let's power it on, press and hold the power button. And we are greeted with the Unity logo. It's gonna take a few seconds to boot up, just like the floor cam. We have the set button in the center, up, down, right, left. We have the back, play, power, and flashlight. Those are the buttons that are on the camera. Now, before I started the recording, I downloaded the application for this camera so I can show you what I'm seeing on the camera. So I have the software opened and let's plug the USB-C cable. And now you should be able to see what I'm seeing on the screen here. The camera is on. If we press on the set button in the center, you will see a menu. Measurement, palette, point temperature, image mode, and settings. Let's go to measurement. And we have something called a center spot. If we press on it, now we have a cross in the middle. Press on it again to disable it. Go down, high, low spot. Press on set, and now the cursor will follow the heat spot. Let's say I'm aiming at the light. We can see that the light is 23.2 degrees Celsius. And we see another point. We can enable or disable how many points we want to see on the screen. It looks like the camera has two points enabled, but we'll go over this shortly. Let me disable high-low spot and we can go to ROI, region of interest. I honestly do not know what region of interest is, but we do see a green rectangle. And probably we are sampling, maybe we are taking the average of what's inside the rectangle, maybe. Let's move to the right, palette. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven palettes to choose from. Let's aim at the light and maybe we can change, we can go through the palettes to see how they look like. Different situations may call for different palettes. Rainbow, red is hot, yellow is semi-hot, blue is cold. White is hot, black is cold. Red, yellow, and then we have black and white. So by choosing this palette, we can eliminate anything that's not hot. Semi-hot will show as yellow, hot will show as red, and everything else will show as black and white. Black is hot, white is cold. And we have lava, I love lava. Red is hot. And we have something that looks like this, rainbow HC. So we have seven different palettes to choose from. Moving along, we can sample up to three temperatures at once. Let's enable one, and maybe I can move it up here. Press on set again. And we can maybe enable point two, point two, and Point three. So you see now we have 
three points on the screen. We can sample temperatures on three different areas. Okay, I can move the point to the left, right, up and down, so on and so forth. I never need to sample more than one point at once. Let me turn all three points off. And three. Image mode. We have thermal. We have digital. So we're just seeing a camera and not a thermal camera. And we have fusion. It's a combination of a real image and a thermal image. Picture in picture. So the digital image is in the background and the front image is the thermal image. You see the light is up there and we can tell the light is hot. So we are seeing both digital and thermal. And then we have alignment. We can align digital with thermal. If the alignment is not proper, we can do it from here. How far are we from the object? We can choose, but I do not need to use this. Let me go back to thermal. I mean, a lot of options in this camera. $395 for all this camera, the ruggedness of the camera, the high quality feel on the camera, the software, picture in picture, 256 by 192 resolution, 25 hertz frame rate. That's amazing. Language, date and time, temperature unit, we can choose between Celsius and Fahrenheit, high-low alert. We can set an alert where if the temperature is more than 130 degrees Celsius, it will alert you and beep. It's currently off. And we can also do it for lows. Temperature scale. We have low gain and high gain. So what is low gain and what is high gain? High gain is if you are working with temperatures between 0 to 150. And low gain is if you are working with temperatures between 150 to 500 degrees Celsius. Let's say we have a short circuit on a motherboard and that component is 210 degrees Celsius. When I'm looking under the thermal cam, I do not care about temperatures between 0 to 150. So I choose low gain. It will show me all temperatures between 150 to 500 degrees. And if we move down display brightness to make the display on the camera brighter or dimmer, low, medium, high, let's keep it on medium. Auto power off. We have 5, 10, 30 minutes. It will auto shut off if it's not being used. And then we have USB mode. We can choose between USB disk and USB camera. Measurements. We have emissivity currently set at 0 0.95. If you are trying to look at steel, it's different than when you are trying to look at water or wood. So you can adjust that number if you are too technical with emissivity values, you can adjust the number from here. We're going to keep it at 0 0.95. And then we have ambient temperature, which is our room temperature. And we have distance. That's the minimum distance that the camera can focus. What that means is we have to be at least 0 0.25 meters away from the board in order for the camera to focus. If I get the camera too close to the board, the camera is not going to be able to focus. Same as with the floor cam. I have to be at a certain distance in order for the camera to focus. Maybe if you are inspecting a building from a distance, you can set the number to a higher value. But since we are working with motherboards, the lowest value that the camera can focus is 0 0.25 meters. And finally, we have system settings, device information, the model number, the version, and factory reset, format SD card, and auto save. Auto save, probably images. And that's all the settings for this thermal cam. Now, I have a laptop here in front of me. It's an HP Spectre laptop that we need to work on. It does not power on. And I have not worked on that laptop yet. But what I want to do is plug the charging cable. Before we plug the charging cable, let me just check my temperature scale and see where it's set. High gain. Okay, we can try both. Right now I'm aiming at the board. Let me plug the charging cable. And look at this. 
something is getting hot right over here. I mean, it's very visible. It's very visible. I can point my tweezer over it, and I can tell which component this is. Wow, that's amazing. I'm able to pinpoint on the component that is getting hot. Try to do that with a thermal camera that has an 80 by 80 resolution or a 60 by 60 resolution or a 90 by 90 resolution. You're not going to be able to pinpoint on the component. 256 by 192 resolution. That's amazing. It's not as much as my Fleur E60, which is a 320 by 240, but that's a $6,000 thermal camera. That's a $395 thermal camera, and I'm able to pinpoint on the component that is getting hot. Now the board got so hot all around, and you can see now we're not able to tell what is getting hot on the board because heat spread all over. So in that case, we go to temperature scale, and we tell the camera we're not interested in seeing temperatures between 0 to 150. We only want to see 150 to 500. The camera is going to take a few seconds to adjust. And that's where you use temperature scale. You choose between low gain and high gain. Go back. And look at this. Now we narrow down the heat spot. We can do high-low maybe. And we are at 120 degrees Celsius. Now we can tell the, the temperature on that component is 122 degrees Celsius. You see how rest of the board is blue in color? It's dark. If we go back to high scale, then the yellow is going to spread. So to wrap things up, how do I feel about the camera? How do I like the camera? To start with, I'm in love with the build quality of the camera. Very well built, high quality, and it compares to the build quality of my Fleur E60 camera. You can easily access the buttons in the front. You can easily access the button in the back, and this one is used to take pictures. Just insert the SD card here, and the camera does come with a 16 gig SD card. You take a picture from here. I love the screen. Vivid, sharp, easy to look at. 256 by 192 resolution at 25 frames per second, which is mind-blowing for the price. If you want to get a similar spec thermal camera from Fleur, you can expect to pay three to $4,000. Look at my hand, 25 frames per second. This is not a one frame per second camera. This is not a nine frame per second camera. 25 frames per second, 256 by 192 resolution for $395 with all the features packed in this camera, with the 16 gig SD card, with the ability to broadcast the image onto your computer via the software that you download from Unity. All that for $395 is an absolute steal. We got those cameras in stock the past couple of days and the item is already out of stock. We are expecting a shipment in one to two weeks. If you have not already bought one and you need one, you can back order one from our website or you can click on notify me when the item is back in stock and we'll let you know when the item is back in stock. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.